What's going on gamers? It's Phil H here from Beneath the Veil and welcome back to the channel. I'd just like to start off by apologizing for the delay in recent uploads. Um, unfortunately my computer completely blew up about three weeks ago so I've just been in the process of rebuilding and uh, within the last week managed to get a new setup up and running so please bear with me if there's any small technical issues to iron out. Um, still just fine tuning a bunch of the settings. Today we're carrying on with our five part series in the 101 roll guides and uh, we're covering off mid lane. I'll also today record a uh, safe lane guide as well so hopefully we'll have all of those done and dusted and out before the new patch. So here I'm playing a uh, void spirit mid and the reason I picked void spirit is that he covers a couple of core concepts um, that I think are really important to the mid lane. Um, in the early game what you really want to be focusing on is controlling the creep equilibrium and pushing the lane before the runes spawn. So you'll see here I'm just taking out the AA's observer ward that he set up because my supports have already set up vision for me. And um, you'll see as we get up to the six minute mark when power runes start spawning I'll also look to establish vision. So the AA is just immediately dewarding which is fine. I'm not too worried about an early ward just because the only thing that spots is rotations which don't really happen at the lower rank. But it's something that I'm mindful of. I'm always watching the minimap to make sure that everybody's present and accounted for on the enemy team. And otherwise I'm just focusing on CS where I can, trying to get right clicks where I can, and denies as well. And um, yeah, that's essentially all you want to do for the first six minutes is just CS as much as you can. Just keep an eye out for uh, any rotations coming through. And then with the spirit heroes in general, I'm always looking to make a rotation off of the first power rune. So we'll see here, there's really nothing to see here. I'll just skip ahead and um, we'll catch up at the six minute mark. Okay, so you can see here now we're at the you know, five and a half minute mark. Uh, let me just pull up the last hits. So you can see that you know we're evenly contested. The sniper is ahead uh, of everybody, so he's doing really well for me up top. You can see that I've already established vision over here. So I put these up, uh, they've actually put that there, oh that's my phoenix, let's put that up. So yeah, so I've got a ward down here, just to make sure that I can at least control a power rune. Let's see here that I've already got a bottle, so I'm really just looking to make the most out of um, the power runes whenever they spawn. So it's about to happen now, so I'm just looking to get a couple of last hits and try and push the wave, because then it means that the Ancient Apparition either has to lose CS or lose the rune. So it's an easy rotation bot for me and now I'm just going to sit on that rune for a little bit. Decide to try and make a play with the Witch Doctor since he's around. And uh, the AA was just a little bit too good on avoiding the gank. So I'll hover around for a little bit see if he'll overextend but he plays really smart and just plays passively. The Witch Doctor calls it a day and goes back top which is fair enough. And then I will pretty soon after this see that I'm already looking at the minimap and I've noticed that they're pushing bot like quite heavily. I do eventually make a TP rotation here. So this is something that's really important to think about especially in the early game. I think it's the most important for the mid player and also for the two supports is to make sure that your, your TP is always available um, and then so that you can make a quick rotation if needed. So here they kill off my phoenix and I see that oh there's three down here so I'm gonna jump down uh, I see that they've moved over here so clean up the PA look for the silencer I'm gonna keep going and cut them off in trees and then juke the other way there we go so yeah, they're running a tri lane down here for some reason. Uh, so I've just picked up a nice little double kill there. Now I'm just going to rotate back mid. So that's how you really want to use those power runes when you're on these, you know, the high mobility heroes. Um, the best thing that AA could have done in that situation is actually put as much damage onto the tower as he could. But um, it's an AA so it doesn't really clear waves. He just does a ton of damage to me in particular. This is pretty much what the lane was, is he'd just do a bunch of damage to me. I'd get a power rune and go and gank. And um, then eventually I just end up outscaling him, just in uh, raw team fight power. So picking up his CS when I can. Get 
the haste rune. Aya runs away again. Which doctor gets owned? I just go bot. Go and clean up Kuria, get another double kill. And now I go back. So yeah, it's it's really just bread and butter rotating off power runes. Start doing a bunch of damage to him. But yeah, unfortunately I don't have enough on my own to burst the AA. He was doing a decent job at denying runes so that I was less oppressive. And then yeah, just doing a ton of damage to me as well. It did make it very difficult to get close. But I'm still keeping up in CS, as you can see, even with my uh, my rotations. So I just died a tower there just to get the kill. Yes, I fed away a streak, but I did kill the AA. Now I'm just assessing what's going on. I'll just go back mid for a bit. Now I'll pick up another rune. So I found three mid, so I told them, hey, there's three mid, let's push bot. And I'll just go and help them. Here we go, so we take that. So I get stunned up. So it tells me that they've got vision somewhere around where I am now, so somewhere around here. So yeah, Watch Doctor did a huge amount of work there. I don't know where the next win in, but that's just what it is. It's more of the same, you know. We're looking to rotate as much as we possibly can. I'm looking to keep my resources up and keep active on the map. And now my team's looking to try and help me take mid. So yeah, as you can see, I'll just pause briefly. See our off lane? He's doing his job. He's just sitting in this lane, just pushing it in all the time. He's already done a bunch of damage onto the tier 2. So I was really happy that the Viper was playing this way, and then it freed up my two supports and my Phoenix and my Witch Doctor to start playing around me. And the Sniper was, even though he was dying, like he's still massively far ahead on last hits compared to anybody else. So you'll see that's totally reflected in the net worth as well. He's just monstrously far ahead. Then it's our off laner, then it's their safe laner, then it's me, their off lane, their mid. So you can see that just by being active on the map, I've shut down the PA somewhat. The A has done nothing to affect what my sniper's doing, and it's just made the game so much easier for all of us, and just meant that um, everybody can keep doing their role. So Viper can keep pushing, the supports can keep playing around and active on the map, I can play active on the map like I want to, and then the sniper can just continue to free farm. So yeah, let's just jump back to my point of view. There we are. So yeah, I do a little bit of dewarding here, just because I realized that they had some vision there, so I might as well get the free gold. Here we go. Uh, yeah, team's just continuing to melt, and um, now we're sort of getting into that, you know, we're just about getting into that mid-game area. So here is a mid laner. What you really want to do is, you know, secure as many towers as you can and then move into the enemy territory so that you can support your supports establishing deep vision. So you can see they're actually, they're far more focused just around here, which is fair enough, like they're placing a sentry ward back here so that they can't get snuck up on. Yeah, the phoenix, uh, he was doing so much work with these eggs. Just actually huge. There we go. I'm trying frantically to survive here as well. But yeah, so we're at the point now where, you know, my supports could be looking to do things like put vision behind their tier twos in order to take one of them, whichever one we decide we want to take. They can obviously set up around the cliffs as well. They could set up over here if we want to just secure jungle. Set up on this cliff or set up here, as I've covered in my warding video, if you haven't seen that already. There's lots of spots that you could use. Um, it may end up with the next patch that some of these spots change, but the concept's still there in terms of going for your most obvious spots being on the cliffs and then when they're being dewatered, then you can look to alternate. 
So here I'm just doing a little bit of farming, picked up a growth bow, which I was pretty happy with. And yeah, now that um, you know, I've set up my my two other cores, this is my turn to be a little bit selfish and I can start working towards an item. So I've picked up a mage slayer here and now beats of travel. Just to keep me active on the map, it means that I can start pushing or I can start ganking depending on how my supports are playing and how my cores are playing. I can change my playstyle accordingly. But yeah, the reason I got this was that I was just taking a ton of magic damage between the Ancient Apparition, between the Silencer, um, and the Nyx Assassin as well. I was just taking so much magic damage. I don't know how that Remnant missed, but it did apparently. So yeah, and that's just being able to uh, weather the storm a little bit more, just due to having that Mage Slayer. It's, you know, 25% magic resist, but then it also places the debuff. So that's really important to think about, is that if you've got a lot of magic damage on the enemy team, sometimes picking up a Mage Slayer can be the way to go. Just because if you're up in their face right-clicking them, you're applying that debuff. Which means that they do significantly less damage, as well as you've got the additional 25% magic resist. Really good item in general um, for certain heroes. I think there's definitely cases where getting things like the Hood of Defiance and building into either Eternal Shroud or Pipe of Insight is a better option, but for heroes like Void Spirit, you don't really get a whole lot of benefit out of things like a Hood. Whereas with Mage Slayer, it builds into a Bloodthorn, so that's a route that I could go down as well, you know, building into uh, an individual Silence so that I can jump somebody, silence them up, and then in between, you know, permanently controlling them as well with Aether Remnant, and I can get things like my uh, Scepter, which causes my Resonant Pulses to get two charges and silence. So I get a lot of good ways to shut down spellcasters. So you can see my team is just continuing to deal damage over here. I'm throwing a little bit by farming over here, but my intention was to push this lane, and they just wanted to push that instead, which is, is fine. Our only real issue right here is that the Bristleback is doing Bristleback things. We really eventually, like, we did figure out that all we need to do is just ignore the Bristleback and kite him as much as we could and just kill everybody else out around him. So I see that my Phoenix is being dived on, so I TP into the tier 2. Jump in, he eggs. And this is just a really nice cleanup from the two of us. Again, the, uh, the Phoenix did a huge amount of work this game. As you can see here, I've jumped up in net worth, so I'm slightly above the Viper now. That's just because I was prioritizing CSing for a bit while the Viper wasn't. Our Sniper's still massively ahead because he's just, you know, doing the correct thing. As I'll cover in my safe lane video, he's done the correct thing in getting a Maelstrom. He's also got Mask of Magnus, which is a little bit overkill, but he's building attack speed with the intention to farm and just do a ton of right click damage to proc, uh, to activate take aim, which procs headshot 100% of the time just boosts his attack speed so that he's permanently stunning somebody, basically. So yeah, I'm farming down here. The Viper's fighting into all five of them. So they're going to choose to back up. I noticed that there's a Invis here. So yeah, we just uh, cut off the Nyx at the pass. It's a really good team fight from this, from this whole team is um there was a lot of awareness and really good communication in this game in particular about what people were doing and where the enemy were um, and it just made the game so much easier when you got those open lines of communication and people are only feeding relevant information instead of you know flaming each other and all that usual stuff that you have to deal with um, when you just focus on comms giving good information then people can react to it when the lines are clear they're continuing to fight here phoenix is farming and pushing top I'm pushing bar just to create a bit of pressure, try and force a rotation here. Because then what I can do is my TP's up, so I can do something like go mid, and then we could look to gank. So yeah, to save my TP, I notice that the PA's shown, so... I'm happy with that. I'm just going to take the outpost, and I'm going to run off. Now I'm going to look to connect. So they kill the Nyx, I decide... I'll just run over instead of TPing, just so I've got it up in case I need to leave. And then I run to the PA here, so I'm deciding what I want to do. She decides to go on me, so I just disengage. I just don't need to take the unnecessary damage from a potential coup de gras dagger proc, so... Just avoid that, just 
CS a little bit more. There hasn't been a huge team fight breaking out at top yet, so I'm not feeling that sense of urgency. And now I see that there's quite a bit there, so now I'm going to come in. Jump behind the silencer. You panic ults, so that's all good for us. I jump in, which was a little bit overzealous on my part. I didn't quite realise just how strong they were, so that was uh, that was on me. As you can see, the sniper gets away. So, I mean, it's a position 2 for a position 1. I, I don't hate it. I'd prefer not to trade my life for PA, but sometimes it's what you have to do. As you can see as well, the one that we killed is you know, significantly higher on the net worth than any of the others. So, it's a good target, even if it means that I trade my own life out for it. And yeah, so this is sort of, you know, rapidly progressing into the end game. We've got, you know, two tier twos down at this point, there's only one tier two left, and then we're looking at high ground. At this point, job as a mid laner is just continue to be oppressive as much as you can. What I'm doing here is really sort of a, um, like, I'm almost doing an off laner's job and being the one that goes in. Um, again, the Phoenix is just doing tons of work. That was a just crazy good connection to me going on the PA. Um, but yeah, so in the late game, all you really need to focus on is just continuing to be oppressive, and then I've just put as a note here as well, don't forget your luxury disable items. I do see a lot of mid players that build into damage, and that's not your job. That's that's the carry's job. So as you can see, my sniper is building into attack speed and damage. He's got his hurricane pike just to try and disengage from the PA. After, you know, PA jumps in with blink strike, he can hurricane pike away, and then continue just to deal right click damage. He's also building an MKB to pierce through the evasion of the uh, PA, who's being toxic. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, that his job is doing damage, my job is be oppressive and disable. So, that's why I'm building into the Bloodthorn. So yeah, really in the end game phase, as a mid, mid player, all you need to focus on is be oppressive, buy your luxury disable items, and then uh, look to help your team do things like secure rush and then high ground. So, as you'll see, I'm just moving around, looking to connect, and then decide go mid instead, clean up the AA, jump on the Nyx, I get silenced, which is a bit unfortunate. But while all this is going on, the sniper's just melting a tower. That was a little bit overzealous on him to uh, go solo, but he did get the PA to be fair. As you can see here, like my my job is really just jump in, try and disable a target, be the initiator of the team fight. So I'm either using Aether Remnant Fish for a taunt, or I'm using my uh, my my Astral Step just to get in and do something. So there you go, I get the taunt on the PA. Bait some spells. Silence up the bristle. We get silenced. I just like to leave again. Aether Remnant, I jump out. But yeah, I'm just constantly jumping in and out. My wish talk just helping me here just by giving me a little bit of healing. But yeah, that's the one thing I really enjoy about playing Void Spirit is that sort of dance in and out that you get to do, where you can jump in with Astral Step and then you can dissimulate out, or you can fish with the Aether Remnants before the jump in. It's all sorts of really cool stuff that you can do. And then yeah, just letting Sniper deal all the damage. I'm using a lot of my spells really just to make sure that Sniper doesn't get jumped. So put a blank strike out so they can jump the PA. And now I dissimilate out. I see that Nyx is behind us. Nyx gets owned. Grab the AA, he just instantly dies. So yeah, I'm just setting up the disable so that my sniper can do all the damage. Because that's all I need to do. But yeah, that's pretty much the game. There's just a little bit of, you know, the enemy team raging. But besides that, the game closes out in pretty short order. 
And so yeah, I hope it helped. Really, the mid lane is it's all about the the early and mid game, and then if you've done your job correctly with your supports, then the end game just plays itself because your hard carries should be huge. Besides that, uh, I will see you in the next and final part of our one on one series. Catch up.